Hi, I'm Tortellini. Here's the meta news report for patch 7.35D. Hero guides are updated again for the 376th time with 150 changes, a smaller adjustment compared to the 929 changes made in February. Let's check in on the meta weather for the top safe lane pause 5 hard support heroes to play so far in patch 7.35D. But before that, let me know in the comments if you guys like these sorts of videos or would prefer to have all the roles be in one video instead. As always, I'm reading your comments, answering your questions, so please don't hesitate to drop by. Okay, we should talk about the first hero that's really hot right now, Disruptor. Anyone who's been reading the patch 7.35D notes can obviously see why this hero is so suddenly popular and successful as his Thunderstrike, his first ability, received a monumental buff, literally had his slow duration go from 0.1 at level 1 to 0.4 at all levels. And it makes the value point in Thunderstrike all the more valuable during the laning stage. And that also means initiating with Thunderstrike as your first ability to catch enemies from afar is way more effective in its goals and more importantly helps you follow through easily in closing that gap to then use Glimpse when they start to run away. Thunderstrike in the early game helps prevent enemies from closing in on you or from fleeing so you can get a few more harassing physical attacks in. Uh, overall though, the hero hasn't really changed in terms of item build except maybe you can max out uh, Thunderstrike first or second actually. Uh, first you grab Glimpse and then you add, grab uh, Thunderstrike maxed out. You can even get his Ag Shard which will give you a lot more range and you can pick up a Glimmer Cape uh, or an Ag Scepter or a Blink Dagger all depending how you are approaching team fights. The Ag Shard for Disruptor's Thunderstrike not only gives it, I think, a few more strikes, so it's significantly more damage, but you can cast it from even farther away. So it's actually a really nice finishing spell for fleeing enemies, or more importantly, as a spell that you can use when you feel it's not ideal to go into a fight. But uh, yeah, anyways, the hero is really powerful this patch, and probably one of the most successful at AKMMR if you check uh, Dota 2 Pro Tracker. Probably not one of the most popular heroes to play, but definitely a hero uh, that counteracts a lot of the current meta picks, such as heroes who rely on jumping around, like you see here with Mars, and using Dispels or Blacking Bard to prevail in fights. Uh, Bane kind of puts a stop on all that with both his Nightmare as well as his ultimate ability, and Enfeeble can be especially hurtful against those relying on their range uh, to deal strong magic damage. What's really strong about Bane is during the laning stage where he can pretty much stall out uh, you know, some of these off lane uh, setups and heroes uh, with his nightmare and there's really not much that enemy offlane can do in terms of retaliation and it helps kind of secure the safe laner so they can feel confident last hitting and surviving the laning stage. We can see with this setup here uh, Bane kind of puts down the nightmare and then we see a Pudge Pause 1 get the hook to uh, really disrupt the enemy offlane. Uh, for Bane all you really have to do is kind of wait out the enemies to jump in to then use your Fiend's Grip to hold them down. So you think of heroes like Anti-Mage or Mars or Faces Void as kind of prime targets for Bane as uh, these heroes like to initiate and hold enemies in their arenas or their chronospheres or trapped by the mana break and pretty much when they go in they can't really get out that quickly before you respond so uh, pretty good ability uh, for Bane here in terms of Nightmare or Fiend's Grip to uh, interrupt them. Honestly, when it comes to Bane, it's just a question of patience, focus, and timing. Uh, read kind of how the enemy team fights go, see who uh, are your prime targets, and maybe focus on getting them when they show, rather than feeding or feeling like you need to use all your abilities if it means exposing yourself before you can even get your ultimate ability casted and uh, pulled off. So really, uh, you know, if your Fiend's Grip and, let's say, stopping the Face of Void is your primary goal, maybe you should focus on ensuring that happens first, rather than throwing out the Enfeeble or the Nightmare uh, that might actually expose your positioning and, more importantly, uh, indicate to the, to the Face of Void that you're, you're looking for him to come out. Cool, let's talk about this baby here. Super popular hero, Lion. Good hero, whether as a 4 or a 5. Uh, in the pause 5 role, he evidently has good setup for kills, depending if you're safe lane or someone who's especially aggressive or take advantage of your setup. But more importantly, Lion does great at nullifying the enemy lane, uh, just harassing with Earth Spike and Mana Drain. You kind of remove the mana from the core off laner, like Mars or Centaur, so they can't really bully out your safe laner as hard. Uh, giving you kind of plenty of room to control the creep waves with pulls and even stacks for post laning stage uh, acceleration of farm. So with Lion, you're kind of looking to set up a lot of ganks with your initiation to gain stacks on your Finger of Death ultimate, which we're about to see here. Uh, this is important because late game, you'll always have the luxury of saving your ultimate to get a kill and thus more stacks, but rather in hopes of getting your target low enough so that your team can finish them off. So for example, early on here, we can see Lion mostly relies on getting the kill with Finger of Death early on so he can get more stacks. And then later in the game, it's going to be more about using your Finger of Death to whittle the opponent down quickly so your enemy, uh, so your teammates can finish them off 
or finish them off before they can survive, escape, or you know maybe for example, Morphling has attribute shift, can shift over to strength. Uh, and so you won't really get that many stacks with the finger of death. Uh, mainly you're going to be using it to, uh, as I said, weaken the opponents as opposed to getting the kill. As per usual, you are picking up an Aether Lens, uh, maybe a Force Staff, Blink Dagger, and most importantly, Ag Shard for Lion. Essentially, you use Blink Dagger to jump in at an ideal timing for crowd control, interrupt the enemies, uh, reposition yourself with Force Staff if needed, and you rely on Aether Lens to do kind of all your abilities from great distance from deep uh, deeply afar uh, the axe shard is great when you uh, after you use all those abilities to then slow damage drain the enemy uh drain drain the mana of your enemies without debuff immunity so you can't be interrupted by some random stun or silence or crowd control or disable and then you kind of just wait until your abilities are up again restart the whole process again and then uh hopefully the fights go in your favor with, with those great uh crowd control abilities like hex and earth spike uh really chill hero one of my favorites in terms of being a stable and kind of reliable pick for any draft i would say so definitely uh get learning online because he's, he's probably one he's probably one of the easiest and uh greatest hero uh, support heroes to play right now all right let's talk about a hero that's also kind of i wouldn't say niche but not really a hero that you're quick to pick uh, really hyper early game here with life drain that really enhances your pushing lineup to take those towers punish enemy team ganks with your never ward and decrepify uh, later on the match he's mostly just in the back line giving help to like your life stealer your morphling or even your slark um, of course if there's an opportunity to kill someone of course you know use your life drain offensively but uh it's also not a bad idea to use your life drain uh to ensure that these kind of carries can kind of stay in the fight and output hard during their rage or post waveform for morphling that's really the appeal of the hero i think another thing that's really appealing here and that you're going to see specifically in this fight is uh Pugnet popping Decrepify on any target that that Phases Void catches in Chronosphere, which is a nice kind of, of course, interrupt or more importantly, just a really nice. Here we go. There you go. Beautiful. Look at that. Look at that crep Decrepify. Love it. Beautiful. Um, so it's just really a nice way to kind of siege, uh, interrupt opponents. Um, obviously, you're relying on Nether Blast and uh, the Decrepify to then take towers with the rotation from your mid and off lane in the mid game to then become kind of a super healer for your pause one damage dealer. We're probably dealing with a lot of crowd control and disables. Um, similar to Bane, you know, Pugna, you mostly just sit in the back and watch for the enemy initiation or your own uh, initiation to then play from afar with your abilities and your life drain on allies. Um, that's really how uh, Pugna kind of plays really well, how Pugna kind of has uh, control and fights. Uh, obviously, the Nether Ward is a huge deterrent for, for enemies to engage, uh, especially those with big uh, mana cost to their abilities. And then on the flip side, you see here, um, it's all about positioning for, for, for Pugna and finding ways to kind of be able to cast life drain, life drain for a significant period. So for this hero, I'm kind of cheating. Um, I think I talked about Techies before. If not, well, you know, Techies either as a pause four or here now as a safe lane pause five. Um, great hero. This, again, I think it's still one of the best heroes to play in terms of support. For pause five, Techies is more of a decent harasser and kind of can kind of set up kills if playing with heroes who can take advantage of that, like maybe an Ursa, Phantom Lancer is okay here, Weaver or a Life Stealer. It really all comes down to your matchup, both your safe lane carry as well as the enemy off laner. But honestly, Techies just kind of fits in most support positions and his itemization is flexible. Uh, whether it's like a Guardian Greaves or Glimmer Cape, Forest Staff, Solar Crest, um, they really contribute to whichever role and style, I guess, he's in and the level of farm or gold he's earning. Uh, his decent attack range means you can pretty safely harass most uh, POS4, even POS3 offlaners from afar and then rely on Sticky Bomb to punish anyone trying to reach you. Remember I said that in 7.35D, they did increase his Sticky Bomb cooldown duration for his first few levels. Uh, so heads up on that. It kind of hinders your harassment and damage early on. Be mindful of that during the early game as you start stacking, pulling, and engaging with that Sticky Bomb. Uh, again, it's as I said, even his Ag Shard can be great to help punish uh, those who try to retaliate onto your initiator or even useful and uh, even useful on yourself and it also does additional damage. Uh, what's really great about Techies is that when the 12 minute power spike timing and momentum has cooled off, he farms really comfortably with his Sticky Bomb and Proximity Mine so far as Techies can uh, afford that in terms of mana pool. So really nice hero. Great kill right there. I loved it. Fantastic hero to play. Definitely my number one choice. Uh, Vengeful Spirit, another popular one, and it aligns a lot with the fact that her Vengeance Aura plays really well with heroes like Slark, Morphling, Meepo, heroes that 
kind of want their attribute growth turned damage to exponentially increase. But more importantly, Vengeful Spirit just has an insane ultimate ability called Nether Swap. Uh, that is such a good save for the various situations I just named before, like using Nether Swap to provide a shield on your character to save them from Bane's ultimate uh, fiend script. Or how about swapping an ally so they don't die to a ganking lion? Uh, against your, let's say, fully attribute Agi Shift uh, Morphling? Or what about another swap to interrupt Primal Beast's channeled ultimate ability, Pulverize? Uh, early game, the hero is definitely aggressive, right? Another swap the gang target into Magic Missile into Wave of Terror for your team to then finish them off. With the level 10 talent kind of enhancing your Nether Swap damage to it by an additional 200, you're pumping out 700 damage, 700 plus damage, I think, between your stun and your ultimate ability without really breaking a sweat. And on top of all that, you get a nice shield to really hold you over. So although I do recommend thinking of using Nether Swap to save allies, I think it's more important to use it as kind of a nuking ability that uh, screws around with uh, enemy teams and their positioning. Uh, especially with team, uh, especially with heroes that are very popular in terms of their positioning or their ability to reposition very comfortably. Um, in short, really, uh, with all that damage and value, it makes sense that we see Vengeful Spirit players buy items like Drum of Endurance or for better initiation and gap closing, uh, as well as maybe a Vladimir's Offering to really ferry over, uh, ferry over that Vengeance or damage buff and value. It makes sense that you know overall we see Vengeful Spirit kind of being a big buff or big uh, elevation in terms of the team's damage and you can increase that even further with the lifesteal and the vlad's own damage amplification percentage overall great hero uh plays really aggressive early on harasses well with wave of terror can set up any kills in the laning stage uh to an initiator uh she turns into any kind of an initiator in the mid game and then becomes kind of late game uh savior for any carry or just another great hero to uh displace and interrupt uh opponents who usually rely on on being in the right spot at the right time uh, during team fights. Better Banser, bit of a niche pick, but we've been seeing a lot of popularity of him in the pod three or pod five position. Uh, just bulking up with Greaves and Pipe of Insight or even grabbing an Ag Scepter, which does really well in lowering the sustainability against key heroes like, I think Leshtrak's a good one here, Luna, Lifestealer, Faceless Void, Morphling, and Slark, as well as the Ag Shard kind of securing a stun on an enemy whenever they will uh, probably inevitably dispel your own crowd control abilities. You can see here Venomancer has really good uh, Crowd control during the laning stage uh, slows down anyone. Really hard to contest against them. I mean, with a Mar with a Marcy having that much damage, and then you can see the the great uh, crowd control we can see from Venomancer with that poison sting slow, as well as damage output. It just makes it incredibly annoying to deal with this kind of uh, laning stage, and it's kind of the reasons why we see Venomancer so popular. So uh, you usually pick Venomancer to secure your lane. He has unrivaled right-click damage thanks to Poison Sting. Uh, and your level 1 Venomous Gale, it, and it's incredible value point, percentage slow, I think it's like 50%. When it comes to team fights, you're usually in the back laying down uh, that Plague Ward to continue to land Poison Stings on enemies that reduce their healing significantly uh, after your level 10 talent. I think what's really key here is also the Ag Scepter on Venomancer also reduces your heal. So like for a hero against like, let's say Sven, um, that Ag Scepter ability really hurts uh, you, uh, the enemy team from being able to survive. And more importantly, they get deeply affected by a massive AOE magic damage dealing uh, slow. Cool. Well, upcoming trends. Here are a couple of heroes I think may become more popular and meta viable as the patch develops. Definitely keep on the lookout for them and how they start to fit into the patch for 7.35D. First up is this baby, Chen. Uh, we don't really call this an upcoming trend, but rather a niche pick for those who have good micromanagement. But honestly, uh, I would only suggest this hero for either pro drafts or uh, pre-made teams that are considered uh, pretty coordinated to take advantage of Chen's early game capabilities. If you're watching this replay now, this is at 22, 26 minutes. I think they pretty much wrapped this game up, so relatively fast. Uh, with kind of Chen picking up a drum of endurance and Vladimir's offering, you're you're pushing incredibly hard with any early kills and lead you create, as well as establishing kind of map control of your minions or creeps and smoke ganks. But it's as I said, the hero requires a coordinated team to actually work with Chen's setups and goal for early map control, right? You can see here Chen still has a lot of presence with his units, even though he himself is unfortunately dead. Another um, kind of hero that I think has is growing really popular as a pause five. Uh, watch this initiation; it's going to be fantastic. He's going to die for it, but it's going to be a, a pretty good proof as to why I think the hero is very strong. Uh, such a great hero this patch because he just puts a lot of stops to kind of jumpy heroes or e or even heroes relying on Black King Bar to guarantee their output, like maybe against a Sven or Gyrocopter 
or uh, Life Stealer with its Rage. During the laning stage, you output so much control of Leech Seed and Nature's Grass. Look at that beauty. To then have great setup with few items you buy, like Ag Shard, Blink Dagger, or even just a Solo Crest if you have a good teammate to throw it on, like a Sodar or Morphling, good too. Um, I think overall, Tree and Protector just ends up being kind of a walking ultimate ability as the game goes on. So it's definitely for lineups looking to wrap things up by maybe 30 minute mark or even further and, and take advantage of the momentum Tree and Protector can do while he's still pervasive in ganks and leading up to that mid game and in initiation with his ultimate ability, Overgrowth. I think Overgrowth is a nice um, kind of a two sides of a coin situation, right? You can use Overgrowth to uh, jump someone, Overgrowth hold them while the rest of the team finishes them off, as well as your Leech Seed and your Nature's Grasp. And then later in the game, you kind of wait for opponents to either throw out the Chronosphere or pop their BKBs, and then you jump in, you Overgrowth, and then you kind of entrap them because they already blew their the Black King bar, right? They can't really de uh, dispel that debuff as opposed to, uh, say, someone who has maybe a Manta Style or a Yules to further even more their... their uh, debuff immunity or to uh, dispel debuffs such as Treant's great root ability, great root ultimate ability over growth. So that's it for me. I'm Tortellini. Stay tuned next week for hopefully Crown Fall and check out my Tortellini 2 channel for more content. And also I'm on Twitch hanging out with you guys, talking about the patch, talking about heroes that are really good, trying out those uh, heroes that you have requested when you subscribe, um, really testing all your favorite builds every day. Hero build changes are not final and will be evolving as the meta develops. As always, I try my best to give you the most up-to-date and best hero builds in-game for free. Uh, check in-game for the latest versions, and don't forget to support me by liking, subscribing, giving me money, all that shit. Thanks, bye.